Hi guys, welcome back to CG Productions. My name is Tom. Uh, my name is Paul. And we are back for another Patreon campaign Guild Ball match report. And it's the grand final. It's the grand final. Oh, TMG Cup bragging rights. So basically what we've worked out is, that was, that was high. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, each season whoever wins gets this because we've got it handy from when we ran a tournament that one time that not one of us won. With the team that are playing today. Masons! Yep. So we did rewrite history in our last one because the Butchers beat the Fish. Yes. You elected to use that team to kind of push them forward. Yeah, yeah. I said, I said to use that team. I kind of want to use Ball. He looks at the lineup and he's like, hmm. I don't know how to use me to look. <laughs> so we don't know how to use any of them in all fairness. But so in this story, the Masons win. Uh, Quite comprehensively, Brick comes on, he's roaring, Flint scoring goals, there's all yeah, manner of stuff kicking up against the fish. It, yeah. um, but Tower is mentioned a bit more, the Mallet, so the lineup we'll talk about in a second, there's yep. going to be Tower. Um, this is a combination of our first campaign. How do you feel the campaign has gone? Uh, I think it's gone pretty well. It's been, it's been all fun the having the little. Rules. Yeah, it's been fun having the little, like, janky rules, like the snakeskin thing or the. The mist thing with and the um, first match, of course, has leg. Yeah, and I still, I still love that. That that's probably my favourite of the matches. Yeah. The alchemist one was fun. That was ping pong. That was that was just ping pong. That was good. Um, the masons and brewers. The masons brewers and brewers. Was, that was that was that was intense. Yeah. That was a, a long game. Two very yeah. even teams, aren't they? We, we fully yeah. understood at the end of that game why they're in kickoff. Fully yes. understood. That. They are they are bipolar opposites yet exactly the same, yeah, yeah. and that is. It just it makes no sense. sense. But so yeah. we just want to say a big thank you for following along with this to our lovely Patreon supporters because you've made this possible. Yes. We are recording extremely shattered. We're yes. coming off like parents' evenings and school and inspections. I will just leave work. Yeah, he's not had a good week either. So we're going to have a nice fun game, Gil Ball, to round off our week. So we'll go to the team lineups and we'll be back in a sec. And here is the Masons team that is mentioned in the Season 1 fluff going into the final. Now, there is Mallet also mentioned, but we can't have all of those players on the pitch. So I've picked Tower, just because he's a bit more of a major player in the story, mate. So we've got... Yeah. Thanks for that. No worries. Either, either or. Three-inch melee range against the Butchers. No, you're all right. <laughs> uh, so Flint is there for his goal-scoring prowess. We've got Honor and Harmony, obviously, to do their shenanigans with the Monkey and Brick to do their shenanigans. It's kind of movement and counter-charge, respectively. And I think what Tower basically adds against the Butchers is that kind of defensive ground, free defensive stance that goes in. And speaking of which, I've taken the GIC that gives you the plus one defense and the plus one armor convenient. on the defensive stance. The Tower is it's very, very tank. convenient. He is going to assist quite a lot. So I think basically we're going to try and hold the middle and have Flint go around the edges, try and bang in some goals and try and survive as much as we can until Ox legendaries and everybody dies like little petals in the wind. <laughs> anyway, we'll go over to the challenges. Next. Okay, so for my butcher's lineup. Your uh, butcher's lineup. Sorry, Tom's butcher's lineup. The, I got uh, them here. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the butchers that are not mentioned in the final, but successfully they got through to the finish. final. Yeah, they did really well in to this, work. Uh, in, this in this game. Um, so we've got Baby Boiler. Um, hopefully, him and the uh, Princess can do a little bit of damage on Ox's legendary turn because those three tend to do. A fit a fair bit. I Shank and Meat Hook with their charges though yeah. might be nasty again. Not looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, Shank, yeah, it's great range. I've took the GIC, but it's only one influence to charge. So Shank is back to being amazing. He put a really good showing in the against the he fish. Did. He really did. good showing. Um, Meat Hook, um, never really got the best out of her, but hopefully she never does enough. Even though she's OP, yeah, she never does enough in a match. No, no, um, and then. Hopefully, tactic in this is possibly go for four takeouts and a brisket goal with a super shot. Yeah, I've only got one character with a two-inch melee, and that's Brick. So Brisket's unpredictable movement is a, a massive pain in yes. the neck going into this. Um, it's just it's just trying to avoid the brick and marbles counter attack. I think that's that's where the the butchers could could crumble. The cuddle but, bubble. The cuddle. Cuddle bubble. The cuddle bubble. Yeah, is that what that's what I'm calling it now. Oh no. Anyway, is that going to be on t-shirts? That is now. We're going to go sell that merch. <laughs> we're going to sell out. So we'll go to the roll off and into this championship final match. All right then, on to the roll off for the championship final. Come on, butchers. Six. Oh. oh, does that not just set the precedent? Um, I that you are only six this game. I, oh, oh, yeah. I think you can definitely kick to me for that rudeness. Enjoy your turn one flint goal return. Yay! Here we go. Okay, so Ox. 
get them up the pitch. Get that aura ready to go. Get this uh, championship game underway. Uh, so, five inch move. Gets him up to there, taking the ball with him. Six inch kick. Maiman for. Punted the, at the wall, basically. Yeah, the wall. Uh, so, white for direct. Now you got Rossi if he's successful. Oh, yeah, got Rossi if he's successful. Butcher's player, see, yeah. look, it's just like lost stab stuff. Stop uh, kicking. Three dice. He is yeah, massively success successful. all day. Um, white for direction. And we've got two, two in the six. six. You might want to re roll that, mate. No, that's the one, Tom. White for direction. In the two, oh, six in the inches. Two. Oh, yeah, I do want to re-roll. Do you want to re-roll that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at the six, yeah. Four and three. Four and it's three. going to wallop into the wall. There we go. So it'll bounce just against there, which is an absolute pain in the neck. No, it's not. Perfect. And we'll go to the influence allocation for the first turn of our Season 1 Championship. Immediately you can tell it's a championship game because uh, Paul is deliberating desperately on his butcher's kind of layout. Anyway, for me... The Masons have lined up. As you can see just here, this is where Harmony's supposed to be, but she's not in shot. So she's got two. Marbles has got one, so he can retrieve the ball, so they're going to try and pass it down the line. Brick's got nothing on him. He's just kind of there to just manage the pitch and threaten the counter charge. Tower's got one in case he needs to pass it on. Honor's got four for her superior strategy. And Flint at the back, we're going for the turn one goal, so he has got four <laughs> influence on him. So a superior strategy, a where did they go, and two activations, you know. If he doesn't get it, then standard Flint doing Flint things, really. How about Did you, mate? Did you score the goal with Flint on the channel? I don't think I've ever scored with a Flint. I've scored with a Flint. So I've never scored with a Flint. Never scored with a goal. <laughs> oh, my God. I was going to do like a compilation of all the missed goals, but I realised there were so many that it would be yeah. a huge editing job. Shark, salt, salt. Salt, shark, shark, yeah. Flint. Anyway, your allocation, good sir. Uh, I think this is okay. Um, so, got brisket. Uh, give it a full allocation to see what you can do, really. Um, boiler, only two, nothing on Princess. Three on Ox, just in case Flint gets within range of uh, an axe, maybe. He's in a nasty it's... position, Ox. He, I can't move too far forward, otherwise it's a bevy of damage. Yeah, I've got Meat Hook with one, maybe just to get her up the pitch a little bit, possibly if she needs to dish out a tool up to somebody. And Shank with three because Shank has all the range in the world. Yeah, he can just get flying across the pitch. Yep, and with my GCI, he's only, he is old Shank. He's old Shank, he's his one influence charge Shank. Yeah. So, uh, the Masons will go first, we'll go to their first activation of the first turn. So for my first activation of this championship game, we're gonna give it to the Glory Hog, which is Harmony. Now she's not activating near Honor, but she's gonna spend one of her two influence to have a sprint just to this position here, which will snap the ball. <clears throat> and she's gonna spend her second one to attempt to kick it to the wee monkey that is behind her. So she's only got two dice kick. Dun, 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 dun. And she successfully manages to, to boot it back, which will generate me a point of momentum. And that is not a bad way to start off with the ball safe away from the scary man with the cleavers. <laughs> okay, because of Superior strategy probably meaning Flint's gonna score. Puppy power! Gonna burn through some activations and I'm just gonna move up. Princess. Are you giving up already, Paul? Six inches. Flint's gonna score. Championship. Have you not read the season three fluff? Have you not seen my dice rolling? I have faith in your dice rolling that the butchers are gonna. Send on whatever. They're gonna uh, hack their way to victory. Last time I tried to go for a first term goal, Shark got eaten. Yep. Oh well. Okay, you can see we're keeping a very wary eye on the ox charge range here. Don't want to be engaging <laughs> that issue. So the monkey is going to attempt to pass the ball over to his bezzy mate Brick. One dice kick. Okay. Totally nails it. it. That is going to Brick, by the way. I couldn't actually lay it underneath. But green for direction. It's going to go in the one four inches, which is if we put it from Brick and a four inch stick. Oh, that's a hell of a miss. That's that's not good by the Monkles. That's not going to be intercepted. That anymore. is not going to be intercepted at all. So with that, you fail your other monkey. It's going the right direction, though. We can give him credit for that. It's forward. Uh, monkey is just going to... To that position What's there. What's he going to do? <laughs> <laughs> so you messed that up. Yeah, monkeys don't play football well. Bloody monkey. He's going to throw, him, throw him poo at people, then. <laughs> um, well, hopefully he's out of range of throwing poo at Meat Hook, so I'm going to spend a one, two, runner up 
eight. There is intimidating the speedy butchers team which just all of them being on the halfway line at the end of the first turn. I'm not used to this, so you've got to plan a little bit tactically. Normal, normally Scarth has scored by now, but the butchers but have got to kind of... You can actually think. I've got to think. And then, get you, them into then, position, you, then you roll then, dice. Then kill. Over to Tower then, and he is just going to go on ball retrieval duty. Just this position here in cover. He's then going to attempt to pass the ball just to the boss, Honor. So, he is successful with that pass. Just the bounce. Generates me another point of lovely momentum. And we'll go back to you, mate. Okay, so I'm going to try doing some damage. So, Brisket is going to spend one of her influence to run eight inches. Another butcher on the halfway line, not good. Very not good. Uh, and then I'm going to throw some dirty knives at Harmony. Harmony, one of them too. So you need a five plus with her defense because she's so good and lithe. Oh, well, never mind. And we get a five plus. <laughs> so that Thank you very much. One damage, minus one defense, and poison, from what I recall. That is correct. <laughs> tell tell almost, which one of the butchers uh, player is in this. It's like you've played the butchers before. <laughs> uh, I've got one influence left, and there's no real point in putting Super Shot up, but. Just in case something completely, Just in case something magical completely happens. Completely janky happens that I'm able to do anything. I am going to spend the last influence because I may as well. She's got it to give a super shot. Right. Unlike the actual story, Brick's not going to get taken out immediately and then come raging on. But he is going to get himself into position and just move to that line there, which is conveniently about an eighth of an inch <laughs> outside of Ox's charge range, just to bait him into the cage. My turn. Here we go. Um. So. After reading Boiler's card correctly, <laughs> not that I had to re-record this. No, no. No. Um, I'm going to spend one influence to run him up, which gets him... A little bit of a snake, but he can get up to the halfway line pretty yeah. much. Gets him just up to the halfway line. And then I'm going to spend my other influence to throw a marked target. Who are you going to throw it at? Um, I'm going to throw it at... Brick, he's on twos, isn't he? Brick, so eight inch range, comfortably, and so one dice needing a two. Story and you me. rolled a one. Story of my life. <laughs> Never mind, at least he's on the halfway line. After many lols were just shared there at Paul's complete inability to roll dice in the TNG master style that we have, Honor is gonna very simply drop the ball there. I wonder if when we get our own TNG dice, they will be any better. If they're going to be low, we need to microwave them. We need to do what uh, GBIJ did with his, uh, his cooked dice. Oh, yeah. She's going to spend her four to put superior strategy on Flint. That won't give him an extra influence because he's already at his cap. It's not like the old awesome one. And then she's just going to mosey on to that position there. So after much deliberation of not wanting to waste Ox's influence because it's obvious I've given him too much this turn. Mm. I am... Um, I'm just going to move him just short of Brick's counter charge range. Um, so I'm very wary of Shank at the top of our screen here. He has got a ridiculous threat range. Uh, so quite simply, Flint is going to make, for his first activation, a 5-inch base move and just tuck into the cover. You're sucking me in here, aren't you? Here, I am a little bit. That's fell forward. <laughs> so I'm going to charge Flint. So you'll do a little bit of dodging first. We've managed to just about get a pathway through to Flint. <laughs> Nifty, jiggery and pokery. And we're saying we can probably get a laser through there. Not that we own one for the line of sight. I think we definitely you can see Flint from there, mate. So yeah. you've got a 4-inch way to go, which is the white markers. Yep, so that is going to cost me one of my influence. And I'll get shanked to there. I'm get shanked to there, so I'm just going to shift them off camera. And then you're going to trigger your GIC. I am. And go for a 1-influence charge. 1-influence charge, Flinty. indeed. So that's going to cost me 1. I'll click this out of the way for you, mate. Out of the way, if you'd be so kind. Everyone, we're it's always really there. careful putting Shank down because he topples over. That's a lovely view of oh. your forearm in camera there. I know. Do apologise. Quite That's awesome, he's, yeah. he's the worst model in the world. There we go. Um, I am going to use my GIC and take a defensive stance, which okay. makes Flint horrendous to charge. Okay, so Shank on the charge has 10 of these lovely red butcher's dice. I am minus one for the cover. cover. You are a pretty boy, aren't you? I am, and so is Flint. So he goes up to four, then he goes up to five pluses with two armor. Five pluses with two armor because of your GIC. 
Okay, so I'm looking for fives. I don't think you just don't even get two hits here. Oh, you don't. I don't. <laughs> I got one hit. Yeah, so two away for the armors, that's the one success there. I am also in Ox's four inch aura. So you just have to hurt me a bit. Just off camera. So um, a lot of misses and two away for the armor. So that is one successful hit. So that will be one momentous damage. Up to two. Up to two with a dodge, which I'm not going to take. That was well worth it, that GIC. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but I do have another influence. You do. So I'm going to buy another round of attacks. So you've got your six attack down to five because of the cover. Yep. Uh, I'm going to spend one to bonus time it. I may as well. You might as well go for it. Um, and buy another attack. This time needing. You need fours with this time. one armor this time. Yep, so that was a better roll. That was not too bad. Um, so that is three. I've already done where did they go. So that will be two momentous damage up to three. Puts me down on nine. With a one inch dodge, which I am going to take to dodge. Into you, one inch. There you go, mate. So, so you dodge into my melee zone. I am going to dodge into your melee zone. And that has generated you a point of momentum. It has. Let's see what Flint can do. Right, so Flint is in a little bit of trouble in the sense that uh, Shank's in cover, so I don't really want to risk the push dodge. It's not going to do too much. I mean, I could go for it because it's not going to cause too much of an issue in the long run because I've got a spare influence. So I am going to take a swing at Shank. Realising more and more right now that not taking that first dodge in the attack has just ruined me. So I'm going to take a swing at Shank. I've got three attack because you're in cover, needing okay. four pluses. Oh, that'll do. Uh, that is a successful, momentous push dodge. So I've measured everything out perfectly and now I'm probably not going to need to do it, but all I'm going to do is move Shank just to that position there. And I am just going to dodge forward. Flint is then going to sprint about six inches to there, where he's in both Meat Hook and Shank's melee, melee zone. Spend another one for a where did they go dodge, which gets him to there. And then I'm going to spend a momentum and my last point of influence to try and bang the ball in. Now, it's whether I keep the momentum to see if I can stay ahead, because you're on one as well. Four dice kit with Flint. I don't think anyone in Guild Ball history has ever possibly missed that. Except you. Um, yeah, screw it, let's go for it. Oh, oh he oh, bangs hits. it in. So that's a point of momentum back. I am oh, I'm quite tempted to actually spend the momentum to make a four inch dodge, just because if you want Flint, you're going to have to come and get him, come and get him which will pull people away. But first goal of the championship game, Flintus, who would have thought it's exactly like the story? <laughs> so we will kick it out and we will go to the... Oh, we've got the roll-off, haven't we, mate, actually? Yeah, yeah. So one, influ uh, one momentum each. <laughs> Our rolling is awful. Would you like to go first or second in the next turn? I will take the first turn, please. Right, we'll boot it out and go to the influence allocation for turn two. And this is how things look at the start of turn two. And Paul is currently having an existential crisis off camera, <laughs> swearing at the monkey because he's just realised that me not moving for an entire turn has set up quite a nasty cage. And he's just going, I could charge this, but then this would happen, then this. And Paul hates the masons now because there's too much to think about. The ball has just scattered into this little corner space here. Uh, I will do my allocation while you swear a little bit in the background, mate. So I haven't gone all in on honour and harmony just because harmony is a little bit... She's hardy because Brick is nearby, but I don't think she's going to do a lot of great work at the moment. She's there to put pressure on Brisket with the acrobatic dodge. Flynn's got three at the back just so he can also put pressure on the ball. Uh, nothing needed on Brick and Marbles. They're going to just do their job by being annoying. Two on Tower because of the knockback and six on Honor just so she's got the ability to kind of delete something that uh, the monkey goes near. You've kind of spread the wealth, which is... I hate the Masons. <laughs> Um, so I give two Mason hating influence to Shank. Yeah. Um, three of those same Mason hating influence to. They might hate us token if they love the Masons. They don't. Yeah. When they're on, when I'm using them, they hate the Masons. Two on Ox, just legendary turn basically, and two on Ox. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's killing me. Three I'm on the sleep over this. Three on the little boy. Uh, three on Boiler and three on Brisket. 
So the, the crisis Paul's got now is, does he fetch the ball? I hate the Masons. Oh or, or is he going to just sacrifice that? Well, to Patreons out there, if I never play Guild Ball again, it's because of this match. Well, at least it's for the championship. Don't forget, the TNG Cup is up for grabs, Paul. So I, uh, I hate the Masons. The Masons won it last time, the TNG Cup. They won the tournament. So uh, the they're the current holders. I hate the Masons. Anyway, while he's crying, we'll go to the first activation of turn two. Right, so I forgot to mention that Harmony has also suffered two damage from the poison because she's feeling a bit sick. Paul is literally shaking at the moment. I hate the Masons. You've I said? Just, I just hate them. Well, um, run away with a little boy then. Right, I'm activating Boiler and I'm going to try and fetch the ball. So I'm going to spend one of his influence. You sure about that? To, yes, to <laughs> do a. Um, a Sprint, mate. Marked target oh, okay. on. Um, brick. Okay. So um, one dice needing a two. Nail it. Nail it. So he's going to mark target on him. I will locate the token in a second. <laughs> um, I'm going to spend the other one to sprint boiler to there, pick up the ball, and then I'm going to pass it to brisket. So two dice, is it? Needing a. Is he on twos? Four. I've lost this card. Twos, needing a four. And here's where it all goes wrong. I'm going to move that onto the way. Oh, oh a screamer. Three pass. Not too bad. So brisket has the ball. That's generated me. One momentum. He's thinking about the dodge. Uh, yes, because I've planned it. So I'm going to spend one to do the four inch dodge. Just to Touch. get near the fast ground so she can just do a little sneaky shuffle onto it. Yep, exactly that. Lovely. And we'll go over to those mean old masons next. Okay, over to Brick then. He's relatively unimpressed by this kind of mark target. He's just being kind of shouted at by a little boy. <laughs> so he's just going to shuffle himself back just to that position there, just so he's kind of defending the goal. Okay, so not entirely what I had planned for Shank. Um, he's only got his two influence on him. I'm going to have to use the GIC. So I was intending to charge... Me hook into um, towards brick. brick, but the angle's just way too yeah. wide. What miles off yet? So I'm gonna have to dodge shank out. So spend one to do his four inch. Where did they go? Get him to there. And I've got all the charge range in the world to charge into brick, but I'm also going to engage the monkey. I'm actually going to get a little bit closer to Brick and just keep the monkey at two inches. One so. inch you need to be within for the monkey, otherwise he'll charge. Uh, I've got a two inch melee zone. Oh yeah, there you go, yes. so that's fine. So I will stay out of the monkeys. And into Brick. Yeah, so you don't get any benefit from them. So that's cost me one to use the GIC there. I think I will just take the defensive stance. No, I won't. I'll leave it as is, mate. Okay, so ten dice. Needing twos with two armor. Needing twos with two armor. All bar one. That was very good, and I'm way out of boxes order. So two armor away. Uh, two armor away. So. It's a wrap, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. So. So you got six, and then you've got one. Yep. So I will take the three momentous damage and. Two inch. That goes down to two. Dodge. Goes down to two, and I will take the. That to be the one damage, but it will just be dodge. Yeah, one damage, which will just be a dodge. So I've got three inches of dodge to play with. And two momentum. And two momentum, which is nice. Um, where am I going to dodge to now? That is the question. So Rick's down to 17 health. Yeah, which doesn't really make a difference for Brick. He's right. <laughs> um, monkey's gone. Just dodge to engage. Tower. Tower and honour. Lovely. Over to you, buddy. Easy one for me. Harmony is going to sprint just outside of Brisket's one inch melee range for one. And then spend one influence to make an acrobatic dodge into base contact with her. And that'll do. 
Okay, my activation, I've got three influence on Meat Hook. You sound so calm. This isn't like the swearing rampage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's off professional camera, voices, off, Kevin. Off, off camera. I'd I'm, be cool for everything. Off camera, camera, I hate Masons, <laughs> in case that hasn't come across already. I'm going to spend one to sprint um, Meat Hook like round. Eight inches to play with there. Yeah, so just to get it nice and snug into not only the terrain, but also into Tower, who's ironically hiding behind the Tower. I will trigger my counter charge. Marbles is gonna snug to there. Okay. So, do you want defensive stance? I would like to defensive stance. So that's okay. cost me one of my two influence. So I've got three base, plus four for the charge. I gain one for tower, but lose two because of cover and shank. Yes. And I'm after fives with one armor. With one armor, yes. Dear God. Ooh, it's not bad. Uh, so one armor away is two. Is going to be a momentous push. And I'm going to push Meat Hook just to that position there. I am still engaging Tower you and are. Monkey. And Shank is also engaging both. Yes. Wonderful. So I will buy one attack on Tower. Tower's going to counter attack. So you've got six tack. Six tack plus one and minus one. So and then minus another one for cover. And then minus another so one five. So five. You're hitting him on threes with two, mate. Threes with two armor. Oh, oh that wasn't dear. great. That's that nothing. Is nothing because of the two armor. Counter attack. So Tower has got five tack base. He gains one for marbles, but loses one for cover and then loses another one for shank. So he's got yep. four tack. Fours and one. Just needing the one hit here. That'll do. So take the one away for armor. It is three. It is going to be a momentous two damage. Well, sorry, not momentous. Two damage with the knock back. And I'm just going to push her back and choose not to follow up. So two damage to the hook. Okay. You can still chuck a tooled up on someone if you would like. Um, Oxy boys nearby. Yeah, I'm going to chuck out tooled up on Ox. May as well. KG KG. Okay then, over to Captain Honor and we're going to see if we can deal some pain. So she's going to take a swing at Shank. She's got six tack base, plus three mates, plus an additional one for assist with marbles. And she's after four pluses. Anything, mate? Um, on Shank, I don't think it is worth it. So I'm on plus one damage uh, because of assist. I'm after four pluses. And uh, fish that one out. Fur. Yeah, ba ba. Uh, it's a problem with Mason's playbook though. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. Is the full playbook. So that is going to be five straight damage, mate. Ouch. And that knocks him down to. Puts him down no, to nine. Nine. Nine yeah. health. Swing again. Same dice. Looking for fours. Hopefully Mason's averages will play out here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, it's going to be four damage. No momentum being generated here, though. It's probably down to five. Swing again. Reroll that. Uh, da, 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 da. That's quite a lot of hits. One, two, three, four, five, six is going to be non momentous five, which is the takeout. That's the takeout. So that is a point of momentum for the takeout, and Shanky Boy is gone. Honor is going to. Whoa, legendary play is tempting. She's going to move just round to this position here to engage Meat Hook and have a swing. So she's on minus one tack because of Meat Hook being in cover. So I've got five tack, no friends nearby, needing fours and one. Oh, nothing. Oh, wait, wait, one hit. Uh, it's going to be one damage to Meat Hook. You don't get an extra one for the monkey. Monkey's not within. I pushed you outside of both, I believe. Oh, right. Is yeah. it, sorry, is it um, in the same combat? Yeah. So swing again. That's what we want. Uh, no, it's not. Oh, God damn. One damage. Swing again. I was hoping for the uh, push dodge to pull you into the monkey. Uh, again, one measly damage. 
Let's put her on what, mate? Let's put her down to 11. 11. Legendary play is quite tempting here. Um, oh, decisions. It's whether Tower could actually do anything particularly hefty himself. I think I will leave it there with just my one momentum gain. It's the problem with Masons, you either spike really high or you don't do enough, and I'm quite fearful of Ox coming in and doing a hell of a lot of damage next. Okay, so in for a penny, in for a pound. If you see an opportunity to use your legendary, do it. He's going for it, get him lads. So I'm gonna pop up Ox's legendary, move him in to engage on it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. Put this there and just make you hold your breath ever so slightly, Paul. Yeah, I think range. you are the tiniest millimetre out. <laughs> Even at so I wasn't going to be that douchebag anyway, yeah, to you, be you fair. You totally were. You totally were. I've got more than an inch to play with on that anyway. Um, and I'm going to buy a round of attacks. So I'm going to use Honor's free poised counter attack just in case, really. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're on plus one because plus of the hook. For meat hook. It's so, a shame she didn't get that hooked off, otherwise, this would be. Very, very bad news. So this one influence. So this is just one influence. So I am on plus one for the owner. I'm on minus one armor. Minus one armor. Plus one damage for legendary. Plus one for tooled up. Plus, plus three. Tooled up. So plus three. Threes and one because of the minus the armor. Three and one. Oh, it's not bad. Not too bad. So that is two misses. And one for the armor. One for the armor. That's two. There's five, so that would be a momentous three up to six. Ouch! That knocks us straight down to 11. Uh, counter attack then. Oh, sure, they use the knockdown. He's on minus one tap because you're crowding me. Yeah. So I'm after threes and one. Uh, threes and one, yeah. Uh, so could do with two hits here. Oh, get it. So two hits is going to be a one damage. Double dodge, and Honor is gonna pew pew. Well away out there. She did not like that swing at all. Silence falls over the arena. I'll try. <laughs> yeah, I'll try. <laughs> the story of I was gonna say, I'll try. They ain't tough enough on Honor. Um, so, Ox's last influence. Uh, needing threes? Yes, mate. Success. So she ain't tough. She's, She's just tough. dodgy. <laughs> yep. Yeah, um, so, that's a day tough enough. And that is the end of my activation. Tower's up next to me. He's just going to simply move just to that position there to engage Meat Hook. He's going to have a round of attacks. He's got five tack, but it goes down to four because Meat Hook is in cover. Needing that fours and one. She's been quite tricky to hit so far. Uh, one hit again, so that is going to be a momentous push. And I'm just going to drag her into the, the party zone. So actually, let's drag her sideways ever so slightly, so a little bit further back, but outside of cover and into the monkey. Swing once more, so we've got our five tack again, and we gain one for monkey friends. Fours and one. Yep. Oh, bad dice roll already. Uh, that's a miss off camera, so that is one hit. It is going to be another momentous push. And I'm just going to drag her right into everybody's happy place. Okay, so... Probably just open for the best here. Um, three attacks with brisket. May as well. You can do anything. Um, Harmony is going to counter-attack you for one of them. Okay, so first attack, four dice, needing fives. Yes, five pluses, zero on night. Okay, I'm just going to move them just off camera. Two, Two hits. hits, that will be... Could do your double dodge. Could do me double dodge. I'm going to do me double dodge. Um, that might change the run of play, actually. Yeah, so I'm going to double dodge. Just to the edge of the cover here. Ignores my counter attack. Yeah. So two influence left. She could make a goal run potentially if she's on the fast ground. She could do uh, put the goal in camera. <laughs> Ten inch sprint. We could easily move it if you want to get it in camera. You're within range. Yeah. 
You might have to arc your run ever so slightly so you don't go into Harmony's melee zone. But I think you should be well comfortable doing it that way. Okay, so I'm just gonna reposition the camera and take a run at it. So based on my dice rolls, I actually didn't think I was gonna get that. <laughs> so Championship um, equalizer. Yeah, so with two influence left, I'm gonna spend one to sprint um, with the fast ground. Ten inches. Probably just outside the brick and spend one and one of the three momentum I've got to take a shot. You know what I'm gonna ask you, Paul. You got three momentum, I thought you had two. No, I had Crikey. Right, so do you want a bonus? Two, actually. Do you want a bonus time? Either way, I can bonus time it. We'll have to double check that, but I've definitely got at least two. And I've just generated one for brisket. No, double dodge is not momentous, mate. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, sorry. Never mind. So I've got two. So it's one for mistake. the shot and one for the bonus, potentially? One for the shot, one for the bonus time. May as well. Here's where my dice roll Four dice, kid. Good luck. Oh, she oh, nails just it. Just about, yeah. That so. is the ball in the back of the net, which, as usual, we forget it and then remember it later. <laughs> That's an equaliser. Four points to the butchers. That was a surprising end of the turn. Momentum back to you. Do you want to dodge anywhere? Um, no, I'm going to keep it. Okay. Out. So I will boot it out and we will go to Flint. Okay, then. The ball has been booted out just off the centre circle and Flint's eyes have lit up for glory for a second time. So he is going to spend one. To sprint eight inches in this zigzag to this position here. He's gonna spend a second one for a four inch where did they go dodge. He's gonna spin a third one with the momentum to go for a four dice tap in. You gonna bonus down? I am not, which famous last words. So needing a three plus. A Nails it. bangs it in, which is a second momentum on the board. I don't think I am going to run the length of anything, mate. Okay. So that is Mason's on 10 points now. Butcher's on four. And roll off. So I've got two momentum, you've got one. Got one. So he'll be fine, you've got three, I've got one. So you win the roll off. Would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please. And we will do the influence allocation for turn three. So excited was I for going for goal <laughs> that people were like, so we have mascots in this game. <laughs> so we're going to keep the results of the roll-off because obviously the momentum can't change. There's no influence. You've got princess to move, but yeah. my marble activation is just meh. Yeah, and my princess activation was just going to be to join Bo Boiler. Is she going to fetch the ball that came back out? Um, no, she's going to just leave it there. And now we will go to the influence allocation like the professionals we are. What a weird match this is becoming. Like The Masons are storming ahead with it, but it's kind of... I don't know, it doesn't feel like I've had the flow of the game. I think because I've been moaning about the book there, about the Masons. I, I think it's because you've been like freaking out. I think holding the, the defensive line and you know, giving up the butchers, the midfield, somehow has paid off. But um, I've basically given you a choice here, I know, mate. Harmony's taken a two damage. So you've got an easy takeout potentially if Boyd can get it off. Yeah. Ball's there, brisket, snapshot. You've got Ox could delete someone with five. And yep. Shanks just came on just to annoy Flint. I've just loaded up Honor, Harmony, and Flint. So whatever happens, either Honor deletes me hook, or we somehow get it to Flint and bang a goal in. That's the hope. Or I take out. Or you kill Harmony, everything on the pitch. Pass the ball to Brisket and score, and it's game. It could potentially be a game. We shall see. Oh, can you dig it out? It'd be an amazing end to the cup final. <laughs> I've just, I've just realised that. His that's eyes a, little that's, halfway through me talking. That's a possibility while we were sat here watching. I was thinking, yeah, take care out, and then hopefully try and score and see what happens. And then I was like, oh, that's that's what I need to do. Ah, he's only on five health. Oh no, I can't. You've got to fetch the ball though. Yeah. Uh, no, I can't. It's ten points. Oh. I'm, I'm just working in a bank. I've just done I was going to say thank you, Matt. <laughs> anyway, we're we'll going to Paul's first activation of turn three of the championship. Okay, so boiler. Not a lot really. After after, after the oh, crushing yeah. realization. No, definitely can't. So I've got an eight-inch sprint. That's a ten-inch step. Don't need that one. <laughs> um, so what I'm basically going to do is I've got all the, the movements in the world here to collect the ball. So I'm just going to basically run in an arc and engage within maybe an inch. Maybe within your melee range. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, just within me at melee range. Um, <laughs> and one for the sprint. Yep. Yeah. Just gonna wail on harmony. Harmony a little bit. She's got five pluses, mate. I'm just gonna stand there and take it. To be honest, I'd rather keep momentum for the bonus time. Okay, so I got five tack. 
Needing fives, yep. Five pluses. If you roll five fives, oh, oh that's hefty. I do roll three though. Um, oh, that could be the push dodge, but I need the momentum. Uh, so that's going to be two momentous damage. Puts it down to three health. Yep. Um, that was his first attack. First attack, second attack. Two hits. Two hits. Another two momentous damage. Two then. momentous damage. She hangs on with one life. She does. She'll go for the takeout. We'll go for the beautiful snapshot. Because I can't drop the ball. Um, if you kick, you'll be on minus one dice. Yeah. Good bonus time. But then you know you need it for the snapshot. But then I need the snapshot. Well, no, you can bonus we'll time it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll do that. I'll bonus time a pass. So two dice kick to two brisket. Two dice kick to brisket. Oh, he kills it with ease. And um, then you gain the momentum back. Gain the momentum back, which I'll spend both to... And we are within eight inches from the last shot. Try a snapshot. Um, so brisket is on three dice. Needing two successes. Best two successes. of luck, sir. Du, du, du. Oh, oh, she Just gets one off it. camera. All right, do you want to roll distance and direction, mate? Yeah, sure. Wait for distance, red for direction. Uh, in the five, six, six inches. inches. Uh, so that is going behind the goal. That's going off the pitch. That is going so off the pitch. So it goes to the centre circle and scatters. Yes. So we'll do that off camera and come back next. As you can see, the ball is just scattered off camera, just in the backfield there next to the cover. But with two points remaining, Anna is just going to see if she can just delete meat hook. So with no momentum to worry about for counter attacks, I am going to swing. I've got six tag base. Two mates, plus one for the monkey, and we are after fours and one. Doing plus one damage because of the monkey. Meter has been a pain to hit in this one. Uh, minus one is three. That's going to be a momentous three damage, mate. So that puts me to down to eight. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bonus time every attack. So I'm going to use my gold first place championship dice oh, here. Oh, yeah, that's when you won that tournament. I totally was, totally was. Uh, <laughs> swings. Fours and one. Okay. Um... That, that's probably going to do quite a bit of pain. Come on! Uh, five. One, two, three, four, five is going to be four non-momentous damage. Is that four up to five or four? No, left? four non-momentous. Okay, so you've got four left. Swing again with the bonus time. Come on, ones. Yeah. Come on, ones. Uh, no, I'm trying my best. Four oh. is momentous three. Oh, one left. One left. You're stringing this out. The captain wants it for the championship, <laughs> so swing again with the bonus time. We need a singular four plus. Oh, two four pluses, actually. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, oh. she's trying to mess it up. Uh, no, I think <laughs> I it. think we just about <laughs> get it. So that's the momentous two up to death. Uh, handshake on camera, mate. Championship! Well done, well done. So we couldn't rewrite history completely with the butchers there. The Masons still got it, and that is... Hate the Masons. <laughs> <laughs> 12 points to four final score. So we'll go to the post-match interviews next. Hey, give it to me. This stays with me. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, you very much. Thank you, well you. Not saying that the Masons were a little bit heftier. I hate the Masons. Oh, did not mention this. So, you know what? Off camera, while we were going in between the scenes, and I was like, swearing abuse I was at me. swearing so much abuse. Tom, you are such a competitive player. <laughs> you suck. The yeah. Masons suck. I didn't say you suck. Brick is a bleep. Is a bleep. Honor, honor's awesome. Right. The thing I hate about the Masons. This is just, so just like, pit pad the camera. This, on this you, is just, just this just is just the rant. You've got your trophy. Well, I thought that was a really good game. I really enjoyed yeah. that. But go on. The thing that, the thing I hate about the Masons. Yet the thing that is the the best thing about being the Masons. Such about a good the Masons, team. They're a team. They, are a team. they really yeah. are. They do. They do unify. The uh, the they are the only real team in Guild. But all the other teams work well together. The Masons feel right. Feel perfect. You've got Flint, who's good at scoring goals. You've got Brick and Marbles as your defenders. So when I say team, a football team. Yeah, yeah. You've got your strikers, you've got your defenders, and you've got your midfield. And that's the thing. They, they, we've not really seen much of them in this season. I mean, even when we play coming seasons, they just pop up in the final in the story quite a lot of the yeah. time. Yeah, and you understand why when you see them. Yeah, they fit, the they fit that kind of aesthetic. Yeah. I think Flint did Flint things. Yes. Honor did Honor things. Yes. There's the game, really, isn't it? I think the we realised midway through turn two, 
me giving up the midfield to the Butchers, me being Butchers player, I was like, I'm an idiot for doing this, why am I giving them the midfield? But actually just having that cage at the back and just going, nope, you come to this. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's that grindstone, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's just... it's. I think that off situation with his legendary play, you were kicking yourself. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that when I did. Um, but I, I'm not... I'm not a, not a butcher, you're never in the spectrum, yeah, yeah. are you? Um, I'm, I'm very much a, a Hunters player. I don't know if anyone's got that previously but yeah I'm very much a Hunters player um, but the Butchers I do have a lot of fun with them when I do play them but, but everyone has that are, team they can't unlock yeah and you, you, you've you always said Mason's since not your yeah Mason's I hate playing Mason's because I've got to think too much about what I know you've got to think about what you've got to do but I'm not really a a, a competitive player a player for the enjoyment Side of it yeah, nice. yeah 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 no, no, no you, it's you, not that it's not that you're a competitive player you you think about the next thing I go that'll be awesome I'm going to try that you like doing cool things work. with your models and yeah. the masons make you think about the cool things they can do yeah. which kind of makes you then forget about the cool things that you yeah. do and I think that's that's the big thing masons are autopilot for three activations yeah. brick marbles and then whether Flint's not doing something or Harmony's not doing something yeah. it's three activations you don't have to think about but your opponent is like can they get there can they get there what's the threat range what's yeah. this plus this plus this yes. plus this um, so yeah. swing and range but speaking of which if we go into the second season Paul and you'll have to let us know patron supporters there's a certain team that makes a debut which you are very au fait with the Hunters Guild yes Theron with new Theron who is amazing yes and, and I'm only just learning this now and they come up quite a lot yeah. so actually I think you, I think we've, we've drawn evening matches in this campaign -ish. Have we? Um, I think you've won about I won, three. You know, I won, won the Ox match. I had Brewers versus Masons. Yeah, Brewers versus Masons. You won the Butchers versus the Fish. The second one? Did I? No, Butchers won. I won that one. Yes, you won that one. Did you win the, 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 the Alchemist's game? And this is the final, so there we are. Yep. So uh, but I think it's going to be very different in season yeah. two. Two, three. We'll, we'll call it that. We'll have to yeah, look. I'll edit it in somewhere, potentially. <laughs> Um, but yeah, thank you so much for supporting yes. us. We've really enjoyed it. And like I said, the uh, the ability to kind of do fun matches that are a bit different. Yeah. Really, really good. We'll have a Patreon podcast up either before or after this video that is going to explain kind of our thoughts on where we're going with Patreon a little bit and also what we're going to do with the backward footage of the old match reports because mm -hmm. we would like to get them on the main channel, but they're not for free because you've paid for them. Yeah. Um, so we'll explain our thinking with that. Yeah, we've got, we've got something planned with the Patreon going forward and hope to entice new people to support us and possibly change it so it's a little bit cheaper for you guys as well. But very little will change in terms of content yeah, though. Yeah, very little will change in terms of content. In fact, if this pans out how, how we hope it pans out, it should yeah, effectively be more. However, obviously as we've said to you guys, me saying the podcast, we are very busy, we do this for fun, anything the Patreon brings in does help support the channel. You've all had the discount codes for the Teespring. Get for that veteran Captain Salt t-shirt. Get your veteran Captain Salt t-shirt. But we'll talk more about that in the podcast anyway, guys. But thank you so much for supporting Season 1, and we'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy. Bye. What a video that was. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, check out this one, because this is great. And check out this one, because this is great as well. If you enjoyed those videos, there is a link in the description below to our Patreon page. If you want to support us, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you.